Hello, I'm Tom Lowers, the founder of BirdBrain Technologies, and today I want to share with you some new tools my team have created to keep kids engaged, learning coding using real robots, even if those robots are in another building, city, or country. I call these tools remote robots because we like alliterations here at BirdBrain. Every spring, especially after standardized testing season ends, we see thousands of robotics projects developed by kids in schools using our company's Hummingbird Robotics Kit. We knew when schools shut down in mid-March that many kids would miss this experience this year, and so we started brainstorming ways to allow students to continue programming real robots. In the end, we came up with three ways that allow someone to program a robot that isn't physically present in the same place that they are. This video is a quick tour of all three approaches. These approaches work with BirdBrain's products, the Hummingbird and the soon-to-be-released Finch Robot 2.0, and may also work with some other robotics and physical computing products. We've tried all three of these approaches in webinars this spring with both students and teachers, and they work well with students in third grade and up. The most critical skill a student needs to use them is reading fluency. The approaches include options for block-based coding as well as JavaScript and other text languages, so they'll also work well in middle or high school. The first thing we tried was to use Nets Blocks, a blocks coding environment that is optimized for passing messages between student-built projects over the internet. Nets Blocks is built on Snap, which our products already work in, so getting this up and running was surprisingly easy. Within a few weeks, I had five robots set up in my house that anyone could program from anywhere. Once I had the robots running, I had to figure out how to display them on the internet. I decided to use Nest Cameras because there's no monthly fee for maintaining a 24-7 live stream. You can also stream free straight to YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch, though you'll need to reset your live stream every day since they time out. Pro tip, make sure you mute your microphone. The biggest problem with using Nets Blocks via video stream is the lag. Turns out live streams aren't really live, but have a built-in 10 to 20 second delay. This means that if someone runs a program on one of the remote robots in my office, I'll see and hear it immediately, but they'll have to wait a few seconds. Fortunately, you can also use Nets Blocks in a video call. Nets Blocks in video calls is totally awesome. We've been using it in Zoom webinars, and it's powerfully connecting for a kid to puppeteer a robot in our studio from Germany in real time. Also, as a bit of an aside, a robot connected via Nets Blocks is a great example of an Internet of Things application. You can even stream sensor data from the robot. While I was playing around with Nets Blocks, the Microbit Foundation created Microbit Classroom, which is an excellent tool for our hybrid learning future. As someone whose kids go back to school next month, anything to make hybrid learning more effective is okay with me. Microbit Classroom works with all products in the Microbit ecosystem, including Hummingbird and Finch 2.0. Microbit Classroom uses MakeCode, a beautiful blocks programming environment that also converts to JavaScript. A classroom has two roles, the student and the teacher. Teachers can send sample code to students, can see all students' code even while the students are live coding, and can send code from one student to any other student in the classroom. Microbit Classroom is great in a hybrid situation where kids have a robot at home and the teacher wants to provide live feedback on a student's code. But it also works if the teacher is the only one with the robot. In that case, the teacher can download student code to the teacher's robot and then share a video of the student's program with them Right now, Microbit Classroom has one issue. Teachers can't directly download student code to a robot. Fortunately, there's an easy workaround. The teacher should also join their own classroom as a student from a browser running in incognito mode. Then, in the teacher role, the teacher can send other students' code to the student they are logged in as. The last approach to making remote robots work is in some ways the most flexible. Share control of your screen with them and let them code on your computer. Zoom is one video chat platform that does this for free. That way, they can program in any environment with any robotics product. What could go wrong in giving some kids control of your computer? Clearly, the remote control option has limits. It requires a lot of trust since you are giving students keyboard and mouse control of the computer. As importantly, only one student can program at a time. Screen sharing is very flexible in some ways, but it really works best in small groups or one-on-one -on -one tutoring, or for technical support and debugging help. There's so much I couldn't cover in this video, so we've created a ton of resources for you to dig into, and I'm also hosting a webinar about remote robots on August 7th. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.